love this sound. It's strange, but I've missed the cold weather. It's Nicholas. Yay! Father Christmas! Got to take a walk in the, the Killerton estate at uh, Ella Hayes. So, yes, uh, Ella Hayes walking through the wood. I'm going to try and walk up to the top of the hill. I think it's called the Clump something like that. Uh, it was an ancient Bronze Age settlement, I believe. And, uh, I walked up there last week and uh, there's a viewpoint. Though we won't see much today because it's very misty and sub-zero. We had snow yesterday here in Devon and it is, um, what are we, middle of uh, December, a couple of weeks from Christmas. So, Really beautiful, cold but beautiful. I love it. It's my element. I'm not fond of the heat. I like the cold. So, uh, yes. <coughs> anyway, climbed up to the top of this uh, hill, the clump, whatever it's called, and uh, set up the camera and tripod. And there was a hello there. So there's a robin. And uh, I took some lovely shots of this robin with my zoom lens, which I have um, had a while. It's not compatible with this camera, but I bought a mount, so then it means I can use my older lenses. I think about 29 quid. Actually, it's a birthday present from my son, Ken. Anyway. I find it... Um, Magical to come to places like this, I really do. It's nice to be beside the fire at home, and you know, but uh, there's no magic there, magic is outside. Well, it's, magic is in our relationship with the natural world, not hiding away from it. Sometimes means getting out of our comfort zone. challenging ourselves slightly, not in an aggressive way, but just integrating with nature. After all, that is where we originate as us. We come from nature and we go back to nature. We're part of the ecosystem and the environment, the sun, the stars and the moon, part of each other. And I think the trouble is... Uh, with human beings, we think we're separate from it and we alienate ourselves from it and we become detrimental to our environment and nature. We become destructive it's because we are under the illusion that we're separate, which is so sad. It's so insular and isolating, you know. We wonder why we feel so lonely, so detached and sad all the time. Anyway, let's enjoy this walk. This is people we think we are, this is people we think we are separate individuals. But we're not. Might be individualised segments of the same thing. So uh, I've been watching um, a girl on YouTube. Her name is Joanna Jonas, and she's from north of Sweden. She's a photographer and a videographer. 
Um, this is her husband and she makes jewellery and she's an artist and uh, I was quite curious and I, I think initially I started watching her because she's a bit of eye candy, she's very pretty um, but she's been an inspiration the way she sees the natural world and her relationship to it is very healthy and um, she inspired me to get my camera out or, and to take up photography again because it helps me see the world it helps me just see the world you know how we can be so stuck in our thoughts and uh, photography helps stop that thinking because it makes you observe what's around you and the light and the shadows and it helps us to stay present and uh, it nurtures a sense of appreciation even for mundane things you know things that we wouldn't really normally uh, even consider perhaps it's a brick wall but it's not just a brick wall it depends how we look at it it's having different um, seeing things from different angles and not just labelling things but sort of dissecting and looking at it from different perspectives how light can make things change. Oh yeah, she's been such an inspiration. And uh, when we get out in the when I get out in the natural world, I feel uh, much more alive, and uh, I feel the spirit of nature. It's not just human beings. It's. Uh, Everything that's alive around us, the trees, the plants, the birds, and the animals. I think as human beings, I can get quite, uh, or we can get quite, oh, what's the word? We can uh, adopt a very one-sided view and think the earth and this environment is just here to serve human beings, but it isn't. We're just a part of it. It's not ours. It doesn't belong to us. Um, yeah. The clump. That's where we're going. I'm going to take another photo of this. Nearly at the top. Uh, it's misty. Cold. Two degrees. Minus two degrees. Spaciousness. Yeah, it's not only the broader view, it's the smaller view too. It's getting, you know, photography's getting down on the ground and looking at the fungi and the mushrooms and the small things. It gives you another perspective again. What, what is it like to be tiny? And then a blade of grass would seem like a tree to, to you. How is the uh, importance of any life, a human life, or the life of an animal, or even an insect? How can we discriminate and say one life is more important than another? That life is just as important to an ant as it is to us, as our life is to us. If it's a size 
thing. Elephants would roar, wouldn't they? Well, elephants would be more important than an ant, but it's not so. We have intellect, but intellect doesn't... make us better. In fact, our intellect causes us so many problems. And one of them, I think, is that we fail to connect with our heart. We fail to feel with our hearts. Um, instead, we calculate, analyse and dissect with our minds. You know, the intellect is a useful tool. But, uh, that's what it is. It's a tool. It's not us. You know, with intellect we can be very clever and we can actually destroy each other and destroy the world. But it doesn't help us, it doesn't help our environment and it doesn't help other sentient beings. In fact, we become almost like a cancerous cell on, in the world. And maybe humanity has become that the cancer cells. Quite sad. That's amazing. And only at the top. Wow, that's so beautiful. Ice. <laughs> Ice and fire. I think sometimes when you're outside in, the, in this sort of environment, on days like this, come on, Lily. Maybe it's a combination of the elements that gives uh, this feeling of the mystical, the magical. You know the four major, the four main elements: are earth, fire, water, and air. And this is what you have in abundance on days like this: the fire of the sun, the water droplets in the air, the earth beneath our feet, and the air, of course. All the spirits, all the they are spirits or drala, as they would call them in the Shambhala Buddhism creates an energy of this relationship going on. There's a balance between the elements. I think this is what we've experienced lately is uh, with uh, climate change is an imbalance, you know, too much of any one thing during the summer, too much sun, too much heat. And then when it rains, it rains, it really rains because we've covered the world mostly in concrete and tarmac, the rain is nowhere to soak off. It just uh, runs, causes problems. I hope it's not too late for us. I hope it's not too late for humanity. But I think we show tremendous potential. We can be capable of incredible tenderness, love, empathy and compassion, all those good traits. We just need to wake up before we fuck it up. It's a personal journey, you can't just wave a magic wand, you can't change everyone else, we have to begin with ourselves. We have to work on ourselves, that's key. You can't just change external circumstances to change ourselves. We can do that by meditation and reflection, being really honest and gentle with ourselves. Oh, we're meeting these doggies again. Hello, doggies! <laughs> hey, we've arrived. 
And you, Leo. <laughs> Good doggies. Right, oh, hello, Robin. I bought you some food. Is that Robin? Hello, little chocolate. Hello, little cheeky boy. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's my mate. <laughs> Yay. I bought him some corn. That's video this. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Lily! How do you like a kick up the old kai bush? Leave it alone. Look at that, how cool. This is a robin that I was uh, photographing the other day, very friendly. Lily, here. Lily, Lily. Come and sit down, sit. Don't be so jealous. Sit. Quiet. I could sense it was hungry. This is why I've come up. There must be a shortage of food this time of year. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking for a minute. So, been up to the camp. I've given the corn to the robin. And, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the walk. Such a lovely place to come and visit and to be with nature. <clears throat> the dogs are being quite annoying, basically, trying to eat the corn. Aggravated me a little bit. Lily's just quite naughty when she didn't get any attention. The both are actually. It's just the dogs. <coughs> I'm not a pure spiritual person. That's okay. Angry, angry at times. Irritated. But anyway, wow, look at this. Look at that. Yeah, so Ella Hayes, you park in the car park near the bridge and walk up the gravel path towards the woods, through the woods, and then take the first left um, turn. And then just follow the signpost to the clump. Brilliant. There are some longhorn cattle up here at the moment. So, um, I didn't put mine on the lead, but uh, it may be advisable. They seem quite peaceful animals, but I think the dogs will, uh, well, my dogs do, they like to, I don't know, aggravate them. Aggravating little bastards. And now they're fighting over a stick that Jack found. Whose stick is that? Whose is it? Daddy's stick. Hey, Lils. If he's got one, she wants it. And so he doesn't want it anymore. And then she realises she doesn't want it. And then, then she doesn't want it. So he wants it again. And then she wants it. It's me just being irritable, really. They're just being dogs. Nice. <coughs> anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do with this video yet. I've done vlogging before on motorcycles with a GoPro. But I think it's all been done before. It's been done to death. <coughs> anyway, I just thought I'd share a few of my thoughts. I am a bit weird. <laughs> uh, it's just me. I've always been a a seeker. I've always wanted something more um, real, I guess. Something nutritious. I like things that mean something. 
Come on. Organic. I think nature points the way. And when you do start following that path, the path of your heart and the path of unification with... I don't like to give it a word. Nature, then. I think you do grow away from the perceived normal. It can be quite daunting to uh, a lot of people as you start to leave the safety of the uh, I don't know, societal norm, I guess, you know. Um, but if you want to be liberated, it's the only way. It takes a certain amount of bravery. I guess if you could label me, I would be called a Buddhist, but uh, I'm not just a Buddhist, I'm a human being. Buddhism's helped me a lot. So it's uh, spiritualism. But spiritualism didn't, it wasn't whole, I don't know. It was a bit limited. Sounds weird, doesn't it? It was more about uh, interest in phenomena than developing ourselves, our soul, our spirit, our finding out, I don't know. So spiritualism did offer some of that, but I got to the point where it wouldn't go any further and it was just about demonstrating mediumship and exploring the phenomena and not about actually developing myself. So I thought it was time to leave. I uh, attended a Shambhala group in Bristol and straight away knew that that was the path for me to take I don't think, you know, there are many um, what they call uh, branches of spiritualism or there's a word a term for it it doesn't matter which one you pursue, I think, you know, they're just different uh, slightly different variations of teaching the same truths about self self exploration. Squeeze bridge. Should we go down there? Do I go across? Go on then. Look at this. That's a narrow path. <laughs> you can't take shit with you, Jack. <laughs> it's a bit like life, that, isn't it? Ironic. It's an irony. Go on, what your stick. Oh, right, Daddy, get it. Yeah, I've got it. Go on. <laughs> Jack, you won't do that. It's too big, I got it. Come on. <laughs> he doesn't want to give up his stick. Come on. <sighs> you can't take your shit with you. It's about letting go, actually. Letting go of things, attachments. Go on, Lily. Come this way. Oh, there's a signpost. I like signposts. Yeah, so it's not about getting anything. It's about letting go of stuff in order to be liberated. Oh, which way do we go? I think it's... I think it's down... Yeah, we we'll go down this way. Uh, yeah, traditions is uh, the word. So you get lots of traditions within Buddhism, which is different. Um, oh God, I don't know how to explain it. Different. They all teach basically the same thing. But obviously, after Buddha, there was lots of different teachers. And they all went their separate ways and carried the word of the Dharma with them. And each sort of uh, developed into different traditions. That's an easy way to explain it, but I think you can find the same truths within all the traditions. Some of the traditions work better for some people and some work better for others. It's better just to stick to one rather than just keep dipping in and out and like shopping, if you like, shopping for 
white pants seems really white. It's not like um, shopping for an auto. It's on manual. Uh, right, so yes, it's not about window, it's not about shopping. Different traditions, you know, you don't dip in and out. It's about, it's not about shopping for, I don't know, enlightenment or kicks or thrills. So, if you do one, stick to it. Not seeing any one is better than another, you can't explore them all. But it's better to go in, in depth and one field rather than you know spread yourself too thin if you know what I mean especially with the with the past got a lovely stick in your boot It's not easy either, you know, it's like, uh, you do get obstacles, or you meet obstacles along the path of self-discovery, and uh, we don't always want to look at the ugly side parts of ourselves, but uh, there can be wisdom in the ugly bits. We shouldn't want to tuck it all out, throw out the baby with the bath of water. Confusion and, confusion and enlightenment exist simultaneously. And until we start looking at the things that we don't like about ourselves, we can't actually do much about it if we keep ignoring it. Uh, whoa, slippery. You might get a picture of the sky and the trees in a minute as I go on my ass. Right, this way, doggets. Come on, Boo. Anyway, still getting used to this camera. I haven't still got a lot to learn about the different modes in the videoing. I know about basic photography. So, I hope you've enjoyed this little chat and the walk with me. I thought I'd bring you along and have a talk. I haven't really done much of this for a while. I don't consider myself as a teacher, but I think, you know, we can always all point the way, can't we? Anyway, take care for now. Love you, hug you, squeeze you. <laughs> take care.